we're back again and we are now in part two. So second part we're going to be looking at is going to be pretty short and sweet. So hold your horses and let's get into this. We are now going to be looking at setting up your paper type and also setting up your actual power stores in order to be able to get the um, textured look of working with soft pastels um, on sanded paper. If you were using this in um, re real media terms, um, traditional media, I have set this up and what I'm going to show you is to set it up with what would be the equivalent of um, probably the likes of Unison, which are very very soft pastels, they're kind of really creamy to work with and the paper is probably going to be closer to the Canson Me Intense um, Touch which is coarser than the Clairefontaine Pastel Mat so um, we're going for a kind of medium ground basically in the pastel world um, for the papers and we're going for pretty soft pastels, I like working with soft pastels um, I do a lot of landscapes in, in soft pastels on these types of papers, so this kind of suits what it is we're doing with this today. So let's get started, and we are going to start with setting up the paper. So we need to go up to File and New Painting. And as you well know, you've probably seen this box a hundred times before. This time we are going to go to the little box at the side for Canvas. And we're going to go to canvas settings. Ignore all this because although you can pick the papers these are just the presets for the papers and we actually um, are going to be picking one of the art papers, the sandy paper in particular, but we are going to need to tweak the settings in order to get what we want. So click on canvas settings and you see we've got everything here that we need in front of us. The first thing we're going to do is go up to the canvas presets, go down to art papers and then across and go to sandy paper. And you can see straight away the texture and then up here in the top left hand box you can kind of get the impression of what that texture is like on the paper um, with a brush stroke across it. Now that is like extreme paper, I mean I'd probably liken it to maybe um, the really old fashioned kind of wallpaper like the um, arch architect is it architects or um, kind of the, the texture old style textured wallpaper that kind of looks like chipboard and um, that's been painted over um, it's great for picking and peeling at but not great for painting on um, and in this case this is like the surface of the moon it is way too textured for what we're going to be doing today um, and probably to be honest too textured in general for, for working with pastel it's why I tend to to bring this um, to a lot less so the same texture because the actual grain texture itself is perfect for pastel work um, and it is a nice texture for the paper but we need that texture to be a lot finer so down in the bottom section where you've got grain you've got grain size and you've got roughness we're going to take grain size right the way down to the bottom, which is 50%. You can see straight away the difference up in the top. The grain size is a lot smaller, so you can see a lot more of the grains. But the texture itself is still very, very harsh, and that's set by the roughness. Um, if I take the roughness all the way down, you can see that it's kind of almost taken the, the texture the other way. So if you could say that some texture stands up above the paper, if you took it into minus 100, um, then it basically pushes that texture down into the paper. So uh, the plus and minus in the case of the roughness means beveled or embossed. I think those are the right terms anyway. Um, but that's basically what the between the plus and the minus on your roughness is. For example, if I take this to as close to zero as I can actually get the slider. There you go. See it? There you go, zero. And you can see straight away at zero, there is no texture on the paper, which is not what we're after. I usually set this to about 20%. I would say um, between 20 and 5% is probably what you're going to be looking for. 
Now also here is where you set the colour. Um, prior to this obviously in the previous video in part one we were looking at the colour samples and you can see that the colour sample swatches are still up on my colour palette in the top right hand corner and uh, the colour of the paper that is in Marla's demo is actually up here, I've already preset it. So, go to click on the white box which is the canvas colour and it comes up the colour picker. Rather than playing with this and trying to get the colour, if you go over with your cursor up to your palette and actually select the colour, it also selects it in the main box as well. Then hit OK and that's the colour picked. Now if you hit the tick and then OK that again and there is your piece of paper. I'm just going to middle mouse wheel scroll out and there's our piece of paper. So we've got a lightly grained, if I scroll back in you can just about see the tiny grains in the paper. It's always quite impressive when you actually scroll in and take a look at what you're looking at. So now we're going to sort out our pastels. So up here, up to the tool picker. Um, now this is probably going to be different because I have, I've amended the layout in Art Rage to work for me. And as you can see by my layout, it's probably slightly different to some of yours. Most of you will have, if you use the default setup in Art Rage, will have the um, corner wheel. Um, which has all the, the kind of options and settings in it and then the floating pucks and things for um, and colour pickers for everything else it's generally not how I work I prefer to work like this um, yeah don't actually know why but I do I'll probably want to think about that more before I come up with actual suitable answers to why I actually lay it out in, like this it's just I prefer it and I can see everything a lot easier so we're going to go to the tool picker and select um, pastel and in the presets um, which you'll get anyway normally I am going to select the medium pastel I'm not going to select the light or the heavy um, the reason for that is because I, I'm going to change some of the settings but I really don't want to be fiddling with the settings too much so I'm going to try and uh, keep setting, setting changes to a minimal and to do that actually the medium pastel is the closest to what I want to achieve anyway. So this is the medium pastel settings. I am going to pick a nice light colour and up this to 100% so that you can see the size of the brush. And I'm just going to very lightly brush it across the paper. You can see the pastel's texture coming through. I'm going to press heavily through and it lays it on quite thick but you're still getting an awful lot of the texture. Even though the texture on the paper is quite, um, there isn't a lot of texture on the paper, it's still showing a lot of texture through. That is going to be irritating because look, if I change the colour to say, um, let's pick one off the palette, this kind of darker blue, and go across the top you can see that the texture is still there underneath and it's going to take you a lot of layers and a lot of scrubbing to kind of get rid of all that. So this is where the settings on your actual um, presets going to need to be changed and it's going to say it straight away as soon as you start changing these settings that I've got down the left hand side um, you're going to see straight away it's going to change from medium pastel which is the preset one of the presets in Art Rage to um, custom so the one that we need to change and it is literally only one <laughs> is pressure when you apply more pressure with pastel it obviously layers more of the pigment down on the paper the same goes the same for Art Rage the harder you press down the more pigment you layer now, I am going to show you the two different effects of that once I've made this change. Um, obviously, I have a, I, my tablet is an XP Pen Star 5. I bought it for 40 quid off Amazon and it's the best thing ever. 
um, but it is also pressure sensitive as well, much like the um, Wacom, Intuos and all the other kind of tablets out there. So I will be able to show you the difference between pressing lightly and pressing hard. At the moment, that's lightly, that's hard, it's not, there isn't really much difference. So the only one we're going to change here in this section is pressure. And I'm going to change that from 30 to 45. That's it. Not very much change at all. So, now let's lay some pastel down. So this is me, I'm going to use pick another light colour again because it does make it easier to see. This is me layering it down lightly. So you can see it's just picking up the texture. Now here's where we get the difference. This is me laying it down normally. Just my average standard pressure. And you can see it is filling in the tooth on the paper. Here's me pressing hard. And it fills it in. And that's the sort of thing you want because at the end of the day, pastel will fill the tooth and paper and therefore you will not see um, the gaps of the colour of the paper behind. Now, in some cases you do want that and like the painting from Marlowe's demo, you can see some of the original underpainting and the paper colour through the pastel paper because of this texture. And this is why I have um, amended my settings of the paper and also the pastel itself so you can actually see that. So you can see and this is me just layering some of the pale violet over the top of this blue. You can see where it's picking up the blue and obviously where it's picking up the texture and then the more I layer on the more it's filling the tooth and that is how normal pastel works and that is how I've now got Art Rage making the pastel behave and how we're getting such a lovely, lovely pastel effect very similar to what you would get from using the real media. So folks, that is the end of part two. The final and third part of the video is uh, me doing the demo. I won't have a lot, to, I have not put um, any commentary on that video because to be honest with you, there is very little point. It is literally, I am watching Marla's video on my tablet while painting it on my screen and there isn't a lot to say. What I would suggest is get yourself down to um, the description box below, check out the link to Marla's actual video, run the two videos side by side, take a look for yourself and I also recommend um, having a go because that's the best way to learn. Take a look at setting up what I've done here and uh, follow Marla's video and let me know how you get on. Also, as usual, like and sub subscribe um, to my video to see more videos. And also, if you want a notification for when my next video is, remember to hit the little bell icon next to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, hope you enjoy part three and actually see me creating or recreating Marla's work in Art Rage 5. And uh, see you all next time. See you, folks. <laughs>